श्री त्रिपुरा रहस्यम महात्म्य खंडम चैप्टर फोर्टी लिसनिंग टू द लेजेंड नैरेटेड बाई गुरु दत्तात्रेय परशुराम इगर टू हियर अगेन इन क्वेड लविंग लिदास ओ गुरु आई एम नॉट इन द लीस्ट सैटिस्फाइड बाई ड्रिंकिंग द स्टोरी फ्रॉम यू Just like the favorite elixir, I feel like drinking more narrations. Please tell me the prayer by which Brahma and others, Brahma and others, sang the Devi Tripura, associated with Gayatri, resplendent with seed letters forming her body. Then again, how and when the Universal Mother was born in the house of the cowherd. along with narayana how did nanda gopa gain wide fame how was katyayani how was katyayani born what did the gopikas achieve tell in detail to me who is your disciple interested in listening inquire about this guru dattatreya replied to parashurama das O Parashurama, you are wholly under the blessings of Devi Tripura Sundari. The desire to listen to the stories of the Devi is a rare, wonderful fortune to persons immersed in worldly cravings. O Bhargava, listen. I will tell you how Brahma, Vishnu, and others praised Devi Tripura Sundari. the embodiment of alphabets seeing her as the manifestation of the entire knowledge characterized by the 50 alphabets the gods bowed the ha- the hailed the gods bowed and hailed her glory singing an extremely great prayer O Shankari victory to you who are immanent and transcendent victory to you who are the mother of the universe victory to you who by your sport are illuminating the universe victory to you who are the support for the universe victory to you who are the annihilator of the universe victory to you who are the soul of everything victory to you who are the shining consciousness please protect us o shankari victory to you you are beyond gunas tendencies actions and class you are the ambrosial ocean of concentrated consciousness you are the unlimited supreme eloquence you are the primordial effulgence you are the embodiment of liberation your thoughts are independent you dwell in the manipura chakra you are pashyanti the second level of the manifestation of speech victory to you who are the shining consciousness please protect us further in yourself as consciousness the madhyama sound is distinct and you dwell in the anahata chakra with the mixed form of the madhyama sound a part of which is cognizable you transcend eight forms of power that is anima garima etc that are apparent you dwell in many wonderful centers victory to you who are the shining consciousness please protect us though you are the primordial unique non-dual consciousness you assume dual forms you manifest as excellent 15 rays which become 10 when considered in pairs and those again in union with other aspects take four different forms o shankari victory to you who are the shining consciousness please protect us though divided and divided and manifold finally you constitute the 14 vowels you are the 25 consonants grouped into 
the primordial sound with its modifications takes four forms further these four levels of the sound ignoring the subtle portion of madhyama are in pairs considering aspects like bija and yoni for each letter and shiva and shakti aspects o shankari please protect us note a clear comprehension of this stanza calls for a deep study of the origin of alphabets and texts like shat chakra yoga matrika chakra viveka kamakala vilasa varivasya rahasya tantra loka paratrimsika prapancha sara tantra sharada tilaka tantra nandikeshwara kasika mahartha manjari chidgagana chandrika and so on this stanza might render itself to interpretation on the basis of 36 tatvas also you are thus the queen and the mother of the knowledge rich with 51 alphabets you are the sound speech by a clear distinction among the letters you generate different sounds disassociated from your aspect everything would be not like the sky victory to you who are the shining consciousness o shankari please protect us o mother without your aspect the three regions would not exist without your prominent aspect even the highest abode would not be other than a mere conjuration by your skill of combining with them you always shine by pervading them victory to you who are the shining consciousness o shankari please protect us fearing you we are engaged in the task of creation and so on though born out of your lotus feet we are suffering by not comprehending you o shankari please protect us who are afraid ignorant and helpless and who are prostrating before you time and again victory to you who are the shining consciousness o devi you are intelligence vani bharati vidya mother saraswati brahmi maya alphabets transcendent primordium action and eternity you are vikalpa delusion nirvikalpa non wavering aja non born kala aspect sound action power of time all forms auspiciousness and the supreme the vedas o mahadevi o devi of the universe protect us protect us who are at your feet o devi we bow to you thus lauded by the gods the divine mother who is embodiment of the universe was pleased and addressed them thus o brahma and other gods listen to what will make you happy i am pleased by your excellent prayer which has originated from the alphabets and contains secret meanings hence let it become world famous by the name matrika stuti i will manifest as word power and literary talent in the heart of him who reads this prayer at the three auspicious timings in the day there will be no dearth of erudition in him who recites this prayer he will equal guru brihaspati and win all debates he who recites the 24 names of mine 24 times at the three auspicious times of the day and then recite the prayer a thousand times will attain a sharp intellect capable of understanding subtle meanings my declaration is true beyond any doubt o brahma vishnu and shiva listen you should not disregard these shaktis born out of the anger of savitri their fury would swallow the universe of a hundred brahmas and vishnus 
born out of my aspect they who support you are worthy of reverence saying thus the devi assumed her original form o honorable bhargava o honorable bhargava that was the prayer to shri tripura sundari by brahma and others listen again i will narrate how the devi was born in the cowherd clan in the 28th yuga the demons taking birth as human beings will torture the earth by their vile deeds the present madhura city located on the banks of the yamuna river was ruled by the demon lavana there our worthy king ugrasena will be born in the chandra vamsa of bhoja dynasty his wicked powerful son kamsa the reborn demon kalanemi will harass the entire world demons like hiranyakashipu demons like hiranyaka shipu born as shishupala will rule the chedi kingdom hiranyaksha will be born as dantavakra and shalva somapati naraka of pragyotisha jarasandha of magadha and others proficient in handling weapons and missiles invincible and powerful and each possessing many crores of warriors will shatter righteousness kamsa the foremost among them by continuously torturing gods brahmins and the pious will become a terror on the earth then bhu devi unable to withstand the weight of the sins caused by the wicked persons approaches brahma who in turn along with her goes to vishnu and shiva appears there by their meditation and he will be helpless then meditated upon by the three gods devi tripura sundari will appear and bowed worshipped and requested by them for the alleviation of earth's misery addresses them thus all the divine lords cannot redeem the, the earth because of the power of their penance and might and their good time the demons are unconquerable by you hence all of you take human birth on the earth i will also incarnate there with my aspect first i will torment kamsa with my curse then vishnu possessed by me will kill kamsa and the rest of the demons blessed by me the auspicious nanda gopa the leader of the cowherds is living by the river yamuna i will be born through his wife let vishnu born to vasudeva and devaki transfer me to kamsa let vishnu born to vasudeva and devaki transfer me to kamsa whom i will destroy thus spoken by the great devi all the gods by their respective aspects will take birth through brahmins in order to relieve the earth of its misery in the most auspicious vrishni clan narayana will incarnate through devaki and vasudeva at midnight in his original form then requested by vasudeva he will assume the form of a human child and will address vasudeva thus getting to know from narada that his death will be from his sister's baby that kamsa who is my maternal uncle will be alert out of fear now as he is under the spell of the devi in the form of mohini before he understands me as his death take me quickly to nanda gopa's house where devi parameshwari is born by imbibing her power i will conquer kamsa because powerful kamsa cannot be conquered now put me in nanda's house and bring her here then she will steal his power 
think of the universal mother so that you will have no impediments understanding from the words of vishnu about the supreme devi who when remembered will enable you to reach gokula by carrying me the child fearlessly and contemplating all along on the devi you will cross in the dark night the kalindi river through a lit path after reaching the house of nanda where all will be under the spell of delusion sleep you will see on the bed of yashoda the motherly devi brilliant like crores of suns three eyed wearing the digit of the moon on her head wielding the trident the sword the knife the axe wine pot water pot leather shield and the rope in her eight hands fearful an embodiment of deadly dark night while vasudeva places the child there and stands with folded hands brahma vishnu and shankara appear there and bow and praise devi tripura sundari then the pleased devi will assure them and tell vasudeva to carry her to his house as you place me in the house kamsa informed by the door keepers will rush to the rush to the spot and seeing the female baby which is his death will pick it up and decides to kill it despite prevention from his sister devaki but unable to carry the baby because of its heaviness he will drop it on the ground then the devi reaches the sky with her original form and says thus to kamsa o foolish kamsa you are unaware of your killer born within your province he will soon destroy you think that your valor has been snatched by me saying thus the devi will disappear then she will enter me and increase my power then krishna will then krishna with his power enhanced by the devi kills many wicked demons and on the battleground easily kills kamsa by the grace of devi tripura sundari nanda will have vishnu the teacher of the world as his son and attain worldwide fame honored by all later the beautiful gopikas knowing that narayana is krishna fix their mind on him in order to obtain his love they will worship and secure the blessings of the sage katyayana who will be engaged in penance on the banks of yamuna after a little thought the pleased sage tells the girls that their desire to have the company of narayana is beyond reach even then he promises to help achieve their goal he will realize that devi is with krishna in the house of nanda and propitiate her with pure devotion then pleased by his prayers the auspicious devi kal ratri who fulfills the desires of her devotees will appear before him and say thus to the sage tell me what you want from me you will have it soon the sage bows and tells her thus these gopikas soon want union with krishna the incarnation of narayana o devi please achieve that this is my desire pleased by their pure service to me i have promised to achieve their want o shankari by your grace let not my my promise become false hearing katyayana the devi says thus o great brahmin be it as you desire but the desire of these girls is really great so during the margashirsha month let them undertake according to the ordained procedure the worship of katyayani who is named after you then i will grant them the promised desire saying thus the devi will disappear then according to the words of katyayana they will complete the vow and have the supreme being krishna as their lover having heard the story parashurama with great 
Zil inquired Dattatreya thus, O oh, compassionate Lord, please let me know what is that vow and how the Gopikas will perform that and how Devi Katyayani will fulfill their wants. Thus inquired by Parashurama, Guru Dattatreya with joy addressing him as my child narrated the procedure of the supreme Katyayani vow. O Parashurama, listen. Since I know the entire lore of the scriptures, I will tell you about it. Starting from the first day in the Magashirsha month, the worship has to be done up to the full moon day. Only women are entitled to take this vow. After bathing at dawn in the river and wearing white garments, they must make an idol of Devi Katyayani out of sand and meditate on her as taught. Garlands of white flowers, akshata, rice colored with kumkum, and eatables prepared with butter have to be offered. Then they should propitiate with prayers, songs, and dance, and immerse the sand idol in water. Malavi, Sahadeva, Nanda, Bhadra, Sunandini, Padma, Vishala, Godamni, Shri Devi, Deva Malavi, Shyama, Supesha, Salangi, Manavi, Manada, and Amrita. These prominent gopikas have to be remembered at the end of the puja if it has to get completed. Then they should bow to the Devi and Krishna by chanting the following names. O lover of gopis, salutation to you. O protector of the cows, O lord of the cows. O stealer of the clothes of gopis o revered o revered by the cows and cowherds o mother kattai o mother kattiyani prostrations to you o daughter of nanda gopa o usurper of kamsa's valor o the strength of krishna o dweller on the vindhya mountain then they should circumambulate a cow along with its calf after feeding it with a handful of grass. For a month they should calmly sustain on sacrificial rice, ghee rice plus turmeric. At the end of the month the Devi has to be worshipped and the Brahmins have to be fed with preparations out of butter. By carrying out this vow, one will obtain all the ones. A virgin will secure a good husband who will provide all happiness. A married lady will beget a son and a lady with a son will see a grandson. There is no doubt that a woman will enjoy happiness and prosperity by taking to this worship. End of the 40th chapter of the Mahatmya Khandam of Sri Tripura Rahasyam. Chapter 41 O Lord, O Lord, I listen to the extremely wonderful story about Devi Katyayani. I am not at all satisfied by drinking the nectar of the legends. I like to hear again how the Devi dwelling on the Vindhya mountain incarnated as Katyayani. O oh, compassionate Guru, please narrate it to me. Thus inquired by Parashurama, Guru Dattatreya said thus, O oh, Parashurama, listen, I will tell you the wonderful events that will happen in the future. After Krishna kills his maternal uncle, 
comes her and makes his father the king comes her father in law to please his daughter invites all the yadavas to the city of madhura then krishna anticipating destruction from the ruler of magadha moves along with the yadavas to the city of dwaraka situated on the western sea then knowing that krishna is far away the mighty and cruel demon kings nishumbha and shumbha the brothers of the demon aghasura along with their powerful army go to gokula and unscrupulously destroy it they would capture nanda and the cowherd woman and loot their cows and wealth then yashoda the loyal consort of nanda along with the gopikas dear to krishna approaches the sage katyayana he will narrate the legend of the incarnation of devi katyayani to the distressed yashoda who surrenders to him from that yashoda amazingly realizes that the devi is her own daughter and worships her with devotion then the pleased supreme devi katyayani appears before her and consoles her mother riding a lion she chases shumbha and nishumbha the lords of the demons a fierce war will ensue for 15 days on the banks of the river yamuna and the demons will face defeat after re- releasing nanda and all the gopikas she will pursue the hafti and mighty demons to kill them frightened by the valor of the devi the demons run away then the people of gokula will request the devi thus o maheshwari o mother these powerful demons do not deserve to be left out without being killed in the kali yuga men will be weak and no one can destroy these demons hence you should put an end to these demons even if one among them survives the activities of the kali yuga cannot continue therefore please destroy them completely devi who was thus requested pursues the demons to kill them then shumbha will hide himself inside his fearsome cave named devakhata fearsome cave named devakhata in the vindhya mountain likewise shumbha after sending his troops to hide in another cave will hide himself in the ganga river devi maheshwari will chase the demons who fled in three ways by assuming three forms by entering the devakhata by entering the devakhata cave she will kill nishumbha in her form as kali she will devour the army and with her third supreme form kill atop vindhya the demon shumbha on the banks of ganga thus destroying the demons through her three forms devi katyayani the supreme stays in three forms for protecting the world the gods arriving there will praise the devi through many hymns the pleased devi will grant them boons the gods then request thus o maheshwari to redeem the kali yuga from the oppression of the demons please stay firmly in these three places with your three forms seeing you the destroyer of demons the demons will not exist we will on the earth worship you on the full moon and new moon days in the kali yuga the human beings will be hypocrites untruthful calumniating sinners atheists unrighteous so lustful as to cohabit even with their mothers have sex with daughter in laws daughters and sisters women will revolt against their husbands and go with low caste men husbands will leave on their on the income from their wives mothers will 
live on the earnings of their daughters women will sell their sex in the market low born persons will teach sacred texts and brahmins will be cruel to animals brahmins to gain money will become priests to low born class for the sake of wealth people will murder their mothers sons fathers husbands teachers friends and dependent persons even though they talk about righteousness and wisdom in their houses the learned brahmins will take to fallacious tantric practices and condemn the vedic path and perform sacrifices wrongly the brahmins will drink liquor and toddy and eat meat with greed they will manipulate scriptural injunctions to suit their fancy by and large everyone will be wicked hard hearted fraudulent and critical the low born will become perceptors to brahmins the low born will become preceptors to brahmins the low born will take to penance the brahmins will lead a despicable life the kings will be cowards like women the business class will be thieves the majority of the world will be ruled by low class people o devi the brahmins will take to practices that offend the vedas and consume intoxicating drinks and cohabit with low born women discarding the injunctions of the veda they will follow other religions like buddhism jainism and islam such a lot indulging in sensual cravings cannot find salvation anywhere other than beholding you in your shrines thus besieged by the gods the, tri- the triple devi vindhyavasini will reside on the earth to take care of the people this is the legend about the destruction of shumbha and other demons by the devi by listening to this one would be absolved of all sins and obtain his wants o parashurama thus i have narrated everything to you what more would you like to hear from me end of the 41st chapter of the mahatmya khandam of shri tripura rahasyam chapter 42 after hearing the legend about devi katyayani parashurama who was enarmed spoke thus with ecstasy o compassionate venerable lord i will never be satisfied even if i listen to you even if i listen to your narration again and again hence i would like to hear about the earlier story of shumbha and nishumbha how were they destroyed what was their powers what was their prowess with what form did devi fight with them o oh, adorable guru please tell me all this there is none other than you who is easily approachable to narrate thus requested by parashurama the ascetic guru dattatreya systematically narrated with love that legend to him who was keen on listening to it o parashurama listen to this purifying story containing the glory of devi chandika that that bestows all gain this was earlier narrated by the brahmin sumedha sumedhasa to suratha in ancient times madhu and kaitava were two powerful sons of diti lord vishnu battled with them for 5000 years and with trickery slayed them the earth filled with their marrow got the name of medini 
in their lineage were born the demons Shumbha and Nishumbha. They performed formidable penance for 80,000 years. Then Brahma, who was pleased with their penance, appeared to grant them boons. They both wanted a boon by which they would be wholly invincible. A boon fearsome to creation. Knowing that Brahma declared a boon to Shumbha that they will not be defeated by any male person and disappeared. By that boon, both the demons conquered the three worlds and became wealthy. Shumbha became the lord of the heaven and Nishumbha the lord of the earth. Shumbha appointed his brothers and sons to the positions of Kubera, Yama, Varuna, Niriti, Agni, Vayu and others. Having lost their wealth, the gods became pitiable and wandered in mountains and forests out of fear. Thus the dethroned gods moved incognito on the earth. They lived as humans in caves and forests. Indra and others lived like hermits with matted locks and wearing barks and tattered clothes. Some of the gods took the form of birds. Thus, for a million years, the gods had lost their position. The demons governed by Shumbha ruled the world. They usurped and appropriated the sacrificial oblations, the divine damsels, the nectar, the Kalpaka tree, the Airavata, and the Nandana garden. They hoarded all the precious gems of the three worlds. Nowhere on the earth the sacrificial rites were performed for the gods. As ordered by Shumbha, the rites were dedicated to the demons. Shumbha formulated and promulgated his own Veda and auxiliary texts, the Puranas, the religious procedures, the codes of conduct and so on, and prescribed the results of Obtainable by pra practicing them such as good, medium and bad, heaven and hell, according to his fancy. Then the oppressed Indra and other gods together went to Brahma's abode without being noticed by the demons. There they beheld Brahma who was being served by sages, who was glowing like blazing fire whose effulgence had enveloped the world, who was wearing four crowns resembling the four peaks of a mountain, who was being attended by the embodied Vedas and branches of knowledge, and prostrated before him from a distance, and rose up and praised him, keeping their folded hands on their head. Seeing the helpless and poor gods who were praising him, the Omniscient Brahma said to Indra thus, O Indra, tell me why you have come to me now? Thus inquired Indra with folded hands, said to Brahma thus, O Creator, by obtaining boons, the powerful demons Shumbha and Nishumbha have driven us away from the lordship of the three worlds. Bound by them, we somehow escaped. Having lost our luster and strength, we are living incognito like helpless, ordinary persons. Snatching from us the positions of Indra, Chandra, Kuvera, Ishana, Varuna, Agni and Vayu, the demons are every day enjoying the power. Please tell us what is best to subdue Shumbha. There is none other than you who can protect the helpless. Hearing Indra, Brahma, the creator, thought for a while and said to Indra thus, O Devendra, listen to the f future event. No male, including Vishnu, can kill these two demons. There is no woman other than Devi, Tripura Sundari, who can oppose them. Hence, for the good of the world, let us, along with Vishnu and Shiva, propitiate the Devi. Saying thus, Brahma, along with Shiva, Vishnu and other gods, 
reached the wonderful Himalayan peak by the side of the river Ganga and bowed to the supreme universal Devi and with folded hands devotedly praised her thus. Salutations to the Devi, to the great Devi. Our constant salutations to the auspicious Salutations to Prakriti, the primordial force, the good. With restraint we have bowed down to her. With many such hymns, the gods with devotion praised the Devi. Then the pleased Supreme Devi, Tripura Sundari, sent Devi Bhavani to the gods to help them. Thus deputed by the Devi, Tripura Sundari, Parvati, along with her friends, proceeded quickly under the pretext of taking bath in Ganga and seeing the gods there spoke feigning ignorance thus who are you all who are you all why have you assembled here thus questioned the gods who were driven out by the demon Shumbha said thus we are gods who have come here seeking shelter under the Devi Tripura. Hearing them, Gauri saying, Who is being praised here? became fiercely angry like blazing fire and looked dark like a broken sapphire gem. From her body emerged a beautiful partial incarnation of Devi Tripura, a Shakti desirous of slaying Shumbha. She told Gauri thus, O Kali, Interested in helping the gods, I was praised by the gods, afflicted by Shumbha. In association with you, I will destroy those two demon kings, Shumbha and Nishumbha. Brahma and other gods cheered her, who was talking thus with loud cheers of victory. Then Brahma, after repeatedly bowing and praising the Supreme Devi, said thus, O Maheshwari, because you have emerged from the angry Parvati, you will become known in the world by the name Chandika. At the time, two leaders of the demons, the ministers of the demon Shumbha, who were famous as Chanda and Munda, who were engaged in hunting in the forest, hearing the shouts of victory, reached there to know about it. Seeing the wicked demons, the frightened Indra and other gods concealed themselves on trees in caves and waters. Then seeing the enchanting Chandika, Chanda and Munda, tormented by lust, went near her to catch her. They said thus, O lotus-eyed lady, who are you? in this lonely forest accept me or my brother as you please O beautiful one by a mere look at you my mind has been snatched by your virgin charm please come close to me I am the best minister of Shumbha who is the lord of the three worlds come to me with love if not I will forcibly take you away saying thus he quickly moved towards her to catch her hand. Then Kali, glanced at by Chandika, caught them with force and holding their heads with her hands, the powerful Kali buffeted them one against the other, whereupon they became unconscious and with injured bloody heads they dropped on the ground. Then Chandika said thus to Kali, O oh Kali, these two should never be killed by getting the news from these two, Shumbha and Nishumbha will arrive here. Then getting back their consciousness, those two who were frightened and put to shame reached Shumbha and reported with respect thus, O king of the demons, a woman of indescribable, a woman of indescribable universal charm who is Illuminating the directions is staying at the Himalayan mountain. We consider her as the most excellent gem among women. You are being served by damsels like Urvashi, Purvachitte, 
Rambha, Tilottama and Menaka. All of these put together may or may not be equal to a fraction of the beauty of the nail in her toe. This is our conclusion. Without her, who is enchanting and served by Shachi, Lakshmi and other divine ladies, your lordship over the three worlds is a waste. Though you are the lord of the universe, without possessing a gem like her, your existence is of no use. While we were trying to bring her for your sake, one hideous powerful Kali, deputed by her, caught hold of us and somehow we escaped. Look at the injury on my head. What a pity. Your pride has been punished by our defeat at the hands of a woman. O Lord of the Demons, you should immediately kill that Kali and regain your fame by obtaining that universally beautiful woman. Hearing them, Shumbha was urged by lust. He called a messenger by name Sugriva and sent him to her by saying thus, O Sugriva, one beautiful girl stays near Himalaya. You should cleverly bring her here. If she does not come to me by one of the three strategies, we will bring her by the fourth method of force. So go soon and succeed. Then the messenger reached Himalaya and saw her and bowed and said thus, O Devi, the demon Shumbha, the lord of the three worlds, considering you as the universally superior gem among women, has this message for you. I am the lord of all the gems. Hence, come and join me. If you do not yield to conciliation, you will be taken into my custody by force. Our king wants to know who you are, whose daughter, what is your plan? Then the Devi spoke with a smile softly, thus to the messenger, I am well known as Chandi. Till now, I have never been subordinate to anyone. By self-glory, I have come here to destroy the demons. Go back and tell your king to conquer me and take me. Thus ordered by her, the messenger reported to Shumbha. Hearing him, the enraged Shumbha ordered his lieutenant Dhumralochana to bring her soon by conquering her and binding her. Ordered thus, Dhumralochana proceeded along with his battalion to fight the Devi. End of the 42nd chapter of the Mahatmya Khandam of Sri Tripura Rahasyam. Chapter 43 Dhumra Lochana reached the Devi along with his army and angrily showered arrows on her and said thus, O foolish woman, honored by the demons, quickly join the lord of the demons, or else, bound by me, you will be taken to him disrespectfully. Hearing the words of the chief of the army, Chandika smilingly said thus, O demon, take me without delay by conquering me in the war. Saying thus, she showered arrows on the mighty demon. Then the god saw Devi Chandika standing on the ground and Dhumra Lochana on the chariot and thought that to be unmatched. They immediately requested Vishnu for the vehicle. Then Vishnu took the form of a mountain-like lion and carried Chandika in the war and frightened the demons. After fighting with the Devi for a long period, Dhumraksha, the leader of the army of demons, sprang up to catch hold the hand of the Devi. Seeing the approaching Dhumra Lochana, the Supreme Devi uttered the hum sound at him. Dhumra Lochana was enveloped by that sound and the flame released from her mouth and within the moment of her wink was reduced to ashes like a moth. Then Vishnu, who had taken the form of the lion, quickly subdued the army of the demons that was swelling like an ocean during tides. Hearing about the destruction of his army along with Dhumra Lochana, the angry Shumbha ordered the great demons Chanda and Munda, who were by his side thus, 
both of you without delaying bring her here by conquering her and her army also bring that lion either tied or killed hearing the instructions of shumbha those two who were frightened said to shumbha das o king please listen she is invincible by both of us since dumra lochana the oppressor of the gods has been killed in no time we think it suitable to enter into a pact with the strong upon hearing them the angry shumbha chided them thus having started the war out of anxiety you are thinking of alliance discarding your loyalty towards me i even think that you may join the enemy hearing shumbha chanda and munda proceeded as otherwise it would be their self destruction they reached himalaya and saw the devi seated on a lion just like the sun on the peak of meru mountain in order to catch her they with their army threw a bunch of weapons at her chandika was infuriated by this then the terrible kali ordered through the angry eyebrows of chandika attacked the army of the demons and swallowed all of them after destroying the army she severed the heads of the powerful demons chanda and munda with the sword and offered them to devi chandika then shumbha agitated by anger at the death of chanda and munda proceeded with his entire army and nishumbha to fight with the devi who was staying on himalaya then the devi saw the army of the lord of the demons which was boundless like an ocean in which the tall chariots were the tides the dancing horses were the waves the elephants were the crocodiles the shields were the tortoises the moving swords were the sharks the white umbrellas were the foam the sound of the trumpets was the uproar and in which the vibrant ring from the bells of the elephants was defending the horizons beholding this shoreless army and seeing the lonely devi the gods started worrying about the consequences realizing their worry the devi created a group of motherly forces such as brahmi maheshwari indrani vaishnavi shikhivahini or kumari varahi narasimhi agneyi and varuni thus the army of the gods joined the motherly forces by wearing such dresses and wielding such weapons conforming to that particular motherly force and the huge army faced the demons a battle began between the two armies a frightening tumultuous war went on between the army of the motherly forces and the demons employing weapons like swords axes javelins large axes flat strips tridents wheels bolts rods iron clubs maces and many other huge weapons a river of blood with froth flowed making the weak tremble at that time seeing the army of demons diminishing the demon by name raktabija came to the battlefield and opposed the motherly forces as he was fighting as many powerful warriors as his drop of blood fell on the ground were born and again as many of such warriors were born from each of them and so on everyone equaling raktavija in form intelligence and strength the entire earth was pervaded by an extremely huge number of them seeing such a perplexing phenomenon the gods were terrified of the consequences then chandika seeing the offsprings of raktavija very cleverly told kali who was by her side thus o oh kali by spreading your tongue keep on drinking the blood that comes out of the injuries of raktavija obeying her kali with her mouth widely opened moved all around 
the war field, drinking the blood of the demons and tormenting them. Thus, as Kali was consuming their blood, the great demons lost their strength and were cut to pieces by the weapons of the motherly forces. When Raktavija was thus lost, Nishumbha, the lord of the demons, arrived with his army to fight with Devi Chandika. With fury, he showered arrows on her. Chandika destroyed them by a retaliating shower of arrows. The mighty army of the demons fought with the forces of Shakti and was destroyed by Kali and the lion. Seeing this, Nishumbha angrily went in front of Chandika. Then Chandika poured weapons on Nishumbha, who was approaching her. The demons welled as he was caught in that rain of arrows. But Nishumbha immediately destroyed that shower by another one and emerged from the cloud of weapons just like the sun. Then the angry Nishumbha discharged an iron weapon called Shakti against the Devi. Chandika cut that in the space into three pieces. Similarly, she quickly destroyed by arrows weapons like rod, axe, trident, mess, and spear that were repeatedly directed towards her by Nishumbha. Then Nishumbha, holding the sword, rushed towards Chandika, calling out, Stop! Stop! Seeing him, who was like the Lord of Death during deluge, approaching the Devi, the gods were frightened. The, the sages wished for her welfare. Meanwhile, the Supreme Devi overpowered the rushing Nishumbha and with the sword quickly severed his head. Then the lion, Kalika, and other divine forces with fury destroyed the entire army of the demons. Depressed by hearing the death of his brother and the army as well, Shumbha with wild anger struck with the sword the lion on its head. After fighting for a long period, Shumbha faced Kalika and battled wonderfully with her. Kalika was astonished by his strength, skill and versatility in handling the weapons. The gods and the sages appreciated him. Seeing that fierce, brave and skilled Shumbha, who was surpassing Kali, Chandika approached him, seeing her Shumbha with a loud laughter said thus, O oh, wicked woman, if you are interested in fighting with me, then let your other forces stay away for a while, and you will know my strength. Out of compassion towards a woman, I was indifferent about them. Now, all alone, you cannot survive fighting with me. Hearing the words of Shumbha, Chandika, holding back her army, fought with Shumbha, by riding the great lion. Then Shumbha quickly concealed her in the mist of arrows. Seeing the Devi drowned in the ocean of arrows of Shumbha, the frightened guards cried in agony, where, as the demons rejoiced and appreciated him with slogans of victory. Then Chandika also adopting breeze-like arrows came out of that mist of arrows like a sun. Shumbha repeatedly poured arrows on her who came out. She discharged opposing weapons repeatedly at him. Thinking that she was not conquerable by missiles, the valiant Shumbha lifted the Devi and travelled in the sky, seeing her being carried by the demon. The sad gods prayed to the primordial great Devi, Sri Tripura Sundari. Shumbha, carrying the Devi Chandika, traversed in a minute 91 lakh Yojanas. Understanding that she is caught and being carried, Chandika quickly struck the demon on his head with the thunderbolt like sword. Hit hard on his head, he slightly lost control and released her. She fought with him in the sky. After a long fight, when the great demon jumped with his mess to hit her, Chandika caught him by his leg and swinging him many times, dashed him onto the ground. Thus, flapped onto the ground, the demon heavily vomited blood. 
For a minute, he was unconscious. As he was trying to stand up, Chandika pressed his chest with her foot and with extreme fury pierced the trident into his neck. With his head severed, the king of the demons died. Then the remaining demons fled in all directions. The horizons brightened up as the mighty demon Shumbha was killed. The breeze was peaceful. The sun shone brightly. The oceans were calm. Hearing the death of Shumbha, the lord of the demons, the gods rejoiced and praised the Devi in many ways. The pleased Vishnu praised Devi Chandika thus, Shankari, the best among gods, the slayer of Shumbha, the great strength of Parameshwara, the destroyer of the sins of those who behold her, the warder of the afflictions of those devoted to her feet, the dispeller of the ignorance of those who have realized her truth triumphs. In, if ever, if ever in their life human beings somehow remember even once your lotus feet, then how will they again take a painful birth which will be like a marriage to them? They will not have births and deaths. O oh mother, how can I, even assuming the form of Adishesha, the thousand-hooded serpent, describe your transcendent glory, which is unlimited? It might be impossible. It might be possible to count the number of dust particles in the air, but never your glories. In this world, the fact that you destroy the sorrow of people is not surprisingly, because the motherly love towards a child is but natural. In this world, a capable person, even if he is perplexed, will not ignore the scene of his house being ruined. If anybody in the world desires to please you, who is charming, who are the quintessence of vocabulary by his skilled eloquence will that o devi become your hymn it would indeed be like converting the ocean of ambrosia into honey by adding a few drops of it thus praising the devi vishnu prostrated before her brahma and other gods also filled with devotion prostrated chandika who was thus lauded who destroyed the demons who were tormenting the gods disappeared after granting boons to the gods o parashurama thus in the past the devi destroyed the valiant mighty demons like shumbha who were destroying the worlds worshipped by brahma and other gods whenever they are oppressed by the demons devi tripura sundari who is propitiated by everyone incarnates with a fraction of her power to protect the gods and the and the world also without her involvement how can even a blade of grass move just like the waves without the sea therefore o parashurama one should worship the supreme transcendental devi tripura sundari who destroys the sins of her devotees by keeping aside worldly actions. If not, the human beings would get drowned in the middle of the deep ocean of worldliness and touch its bottom, resulting in disaster to the self. End of the 43rd chapter of the Mahatmya Khandam of Sri Tripura Rahasyam. Chapter 44 Having heard the honey-like legend of Devi Chandika, Parashurama, the son of Bhrigo race, became like an intoxicated bee that was drunk with honey. He was filled with ecstasy by hearing the great glory of Sri Tripura Sundari and for a moment was still like a picture unaware of in and out. Then, remembering his natural state, he was astonished and said with love thus, 
O ocean of compassion, O Lord, I have been saved by you. I, who was miserable, immersed in the boundless ocean of worldly life, have indeed fearlessly crossed that fearsome ocean by the boat which is your divine feet. I am blessed by your grace. I do not fear death. While narrating the story of Devi Sri Tripura Sundari, you have told me the great legends of Katyayani and Chandika who are the partial incarnations of her. Now please tell me another legend about Sri Tripura Sundari. I am never satisfied of hearing her auspicious stories, which being will feel satisfied by drinking the elixir of divine legends that is like a great medicine to the sick, excepting a few struck by death. Hearing Parashurama, the pleased Dattatreya, recognizing his interest in the legends of the Parashakti, said thus, O Parashurama, listen to the wonderful story of Kalika, who was born out of the anger of Sri Tripura. In the past, there were 1,000 brothers, the sons of Diti, who were mighty and known as Kalakhanjas. They did penance for 13 Arbudas. One Arbuda equals to 100 million, which agitated the worlds. Indra's throne was shaken and the gods were frightened. Requested by the gods, Brahma went to them and said thus, O demons, tell me what boon you want from me. Stop your penance, which is harmful to the world. The demons bowed and said thus, We should never die. Hearing the demons and realizing the danger, Brahma told them, Thus you will not die from other than woman. The demons mutually thought about it and said thus to Brahma, Let us not have death from the woman who are existing now. Brahma agreed and left for his heavenly abode. Then the mighty Kalakanja demons conquered Indra and others and confiscated the wealth of the three worlds including the sacrificial oblations, the divine damsels and the dwellings of the lords of the horizons. The dethroned Indra and other gods reached Brahma and sought relief of their defeat from the Kalakanjas. Requested thus, Brahma meditated and came to know about the future prosperity of the demons and spoke to the gods thus, O gods, in this matter nothing can be done. They cannot be killed either by men or women who are living today. They could be destroyed by a woman who transcends worldliness. There is no woman of this kind anywhere in the universe. Hence the task appears impossible. To achieve our goal, let us propitiate Devi Tripura Sundari. Saying thus, Brahma and others reached the Meru peak and praised Devi Tripura, who is the executor of the universe. At that time, the Kalakhanjas, coming to know the act of the gods, went there to spoil their efforts as directed by Shukracharya. The demons shouted thus, bind them, kill them by going quickly. Seeing the arrival of the Kalakhanjas, the fear-struck gods yelled loudly, surrendering to the Devi thus, O great Devi, O protector of the devotees, O Tripura Sundari, O refuge, protect us, the gods who are in trouble, protect us, who are being captured by the demons. To protect the gods who are wailing and frightened by the demons, Devi Sri Tripura Sundari made her appearance. A loud, fearsome sound was heard in the northeast direction. The entire sky and horizons were enveloped by a burning brilliance. By that sound, the demons fell unconscious, thinking that the universe was shattered. Then the transcendent Supreme Devi Tripura Sundari appeared before the gods. 
seeing in that direction Devi Tripura Sundari, the ocean of beauty, charming like the multitude of crores of cupids, shining like a lightning, blinding the eyes of the world, beautiful with proportionate body, decorated with the digit of the moon on the head, with three eyes holding in her lotus-like palms, situated at the end of long coral, stock-like arms, the nose, the gourd, the bow, and the arrows, with blue lily-like eyes, in the pond of her beautiful moon-like face, with a charming ocean-like face, disgracing the ego of pearl-like water drops, with a pair of breasts resembling a pair of ruddy geese, that are perplexed by the rising of her facial moon with protruding branch-like arms from her coral creeper-like body, beautiful with bud-like fingers at the tip of the palm resembling the coral branch, with a garment resembling the tender sheath of a red plantain stem, with toes resembling the arrows of Cupid placed in her weaver like shanks, decorated with ornaments shining like stars, scattered around the creeper of lightning, with locks of hair looking like the dense darkness driven away by the rising of her facial moon. The gods prostrated before her by saying, Please protect us. At that time, some demons who got back consciousness went holding weapons near the gods to kill them. Seeing those demons, the furious Devi uttered the sound Hum. From that Hum sound, a great Shakti took birth with four arms, with a complexion of the core of collyrium, with disheveled hair, with space as the garment, with a frightening face, with protruding tongue, and terrific countenance. Seeing her, Devi Tripura Sundari ordered her to destroy the sons of Diti. Thus ordered by the great Devi, Kali, born out of her anger, was contrary to worldly characteristics. She was nude, her long hair was disheveled, her cruel form was frightening. Her protruding tongue was rendered prominent by her fangs. She was wielding a sword. This great Kali, after killing the demons, wore a garland made out of their skulls, tied by their tufts, and a skirt made out of the row of their hands, and looked strange. Continuously consuming spirituous liquor and swallowing the demons, she was looking fearsome, smeared by their blood. She approached Devi Tripura Sundari and with a desire to cohabit said thus, O Devi, show me a suitable husband who can make me happy. If not overcome by lust, I cannot destroy the demons. Thus requested by Kali, the Supreme Devi, Sri Tripura Sundari, addressed God Sadashiva thus, become a suitable husband to Kali. Ordered thus, Sadashiva assumed a matching form. Seeing him equal to Kali, the great Devi, Tripura, gave him the name as Mahakala and told Kali to accept him. Seeing him, the pleased Kali united with him and getting into contact with his body, proceeded to destroy the demons. With extreme lust, she started sporting with him. Then Mahakala also drank copious liquor. Kalika, overpowered by lust, sexually united with the intoxicated Mahakala. By putting the drunk Mahakala down, Kali, who was not satisfied, cohabited him in a reverse mode. When Mahakali was united with Shiva for a long time,
the demons rose and planned to kill the gods. Then, praised by the gods, ferocious Kali, relinquishing her strange sex, immediately battled with the demons by laughing very loudly. Occupying the entire space, she started swallowing the mighty demons after cutting them with the sword. Thus Kali, the conflagration unto the demons, terrifying the universe, wandered on the battlefield, swallowing them. By her mastication of the demons, blood flowed out from the corners of her mouth like streams from the mountain peaks. Swallowing thus quickly the entire lot of the demons, Kali, who was black like the core, like the core of dense collyrium, intoxicated by drinking their blood as well as the liquor, frantically danced, looking like a dark blue mountain moved by the wind of dissolution. As Kali started dancing, thus in the universal pavilion. The entire universe trembled like a huge tree by the wind. By her dancing steps, the peaks of the mountains were pulverized. The worlds were split by the revolving movement of her arms dashing against them. The trajectories of the stars and the planets were cut off by the tip of her sword. The borders of the horizons were smashed by the clouds driven away by her exhalation. Seeing the universe getting terminated, Brahma and others who were frightened and perturbed approached along with the rishis, Siddhas, Vidyadharas, Yakshas and Gandharvas with folded hands. Goddess Kali, they praised her with prayers filled with excellent words and meaning. May Kali, Maheshi, who is wielding a sword, whose face is fearsome, who has dispatched the demons to death, who has put on a sportive disguise to dispel the distress of the universe, protect us, who have fallen at her feet from the ocean of danger. May Kali, whose complexion is like the broken sapphire mountain, whose disheveled hair has spread up to her feet, whose face is adorned with ear ornaments made out of the skull of the demons protect us who are at her feet from the ocean of danger may kali whose body is shining from the stream of blood flowing out the sides of her mouth which is masticating the group of demons whose breasts are concealed in blood dripping from her red protruding tongue protect us who are at her feet from the ocean of danger. May Kali, who is wielding in her long serpent-like fearsome arms, the severed head, the huge sword, the signs of protection and boon, who is indulging in the pastime of destroying the demons, protect us, who are at her feet from the ocean of danger. May Kali, who is decorated with a shining garland made out of freshly chopped wet skulls of the demons extending up to her feet, whose skirt and waistband are made out of the arms of the demons, protect us who are at her feet from the ocean of danger. May Kali, who just by the strokes from her broad and high breasts that vibrate during her dance is smashing the peaks of the Meru mountain whose garment is space who by the nails of her toe is splitting the earth protect us who are who are at her feet from the ocean of danger you have taken birth from the anger of Chandika and for the destruction of the demons you are showing by your own power a fearsome form if this is not so how can poison come out of the ocean of nectar? O Kali, may you protect us who have fallen at your feet from the ocean of danger. This terrible creation appears in you to those with illusory sight and never to those with spiritual vision. 
you are the supreme nectar of the blissful knowledge protect us who are at your feet from the ocean of danger thus praying brahma and others prostrated before her but kali who was intoxicated did not take it to her mind even though she was listening to the prayers then vishnu bowed and requested mahakala after excellently praising him to pacify devi mahakali then the nude mahakala slowly approached the intoxicated kalika and lay at her feet then kalika who was not in her senses climbed on him and danced on his chest just by touching his body she realized that he was her husband and stopped her dance and addressed to the gods who were in front of her thus o gods i am pleased with you you can obtain your wants from me thus spoken by kalika brahma and others said thus o kalika by your grace we gods have obtained everything with the slaying of all our enemies we are without fear o wife of mahakala you have thus caused auspiciousness to the world o maheshwari o maheshwari to protect human beings please stay on this mountain thus requested by the gods kalika who was pleased said thus o gods i will reside on this mountain in my present form and i will speci i and i will specially grant the wants of my devotees i will enable him without any doubt to achieve powers who with steady devotion installs my icon and worships with offerings like meat and liquor and the joy of cohabitation o parashurama thus i have narrated to you the great legend of kalika thus devi chandika in the form of kalika protected the world end of the 44th chapter of the mahatmya khandam of shri tripura rahasyam